Well, again, uh, you know, good day, everyone. You know, I really want to thank you for uh, attending today's webinar. Um, it's really an honor to be invited by CDP to present uh, today's bite sized webinar and discuss my thoughts on verification. Um, today, I'll be discussing the importance of greenhouse gas assurance and, and really what your company can do to really maximize the process. Um, before I get started, I did want to say that, you know, I think we set up a Q&A session in within Teams. So certainly throughout the presentation, type in your questions as they pop up. And my plan is to address those questions first um, after the conclusion of the talk and then if all those have been addressed, we can move on to doing some Q&A's the, the more traditional way. So um, let's go ahead and get right in. So my name is Dr. Albert Chung. I'm the Senior Vice President at Karamita in our Sustainability Consulting Group. Um, I have about 15 years of experience in greenhouse gas verification with about 10 of those coming in compliance related greenhouse gas verification through the California cap and trade program, the mandatory reporting rule. Um, since joining Karamuda, I've transitioned more to ESG-related verification, but but it certainly brought concepts and practices that are required under the California Mandatory Reporting to, Rule to our ESG verification group. Give you a brief introduction into our company. You know, we Karamuda has been around for about 30 years and provides services in sustainability consulting, environmental compliance, health and safety, and, and land services consulting. Um, we are a woman-owned um, and disadvantaged business, as well as a gold-level accredited service provider for verification within CDP. So really, what is greenhouse gas assurance? So it's really the process of having a third party come in and audit and review the way your company is collecting data, what they do with that data, and how they're essentially creating uh, a greenhouse gas inventory based on the data that you're obtaining. Um, some of these sub bullet points are, are some points that we review during the verification, certainly not all, but one, you know, we want to look at your company boundaries. You know, if new sites are, you know, popping up for that given year, are those sites that um, are coming online for the first time, were they acquisitions? You know, if some sites are, you know, being removed for the given years, did those close down? Were they divestures? You know, we really want to understand um, the boundaries for which you are creating your inventory. We're going to want to talk about uh, data collection procedures. You know, we really want to understand um, from the conception of the data, you know, how that data came to your facility, um, what you did with that data, and, and essentially, you know, tracing it back to the origin of, of where the data came from. Um, data aggregation procedures. Um, certainly, data is, is brought into the company and whether it's compiled in Excel, a third party software, you know, if there's conversions um, with the units that are done, we certainly want to understand any interaction between you or a software with the raw data just to make sure that that coordination is, is accurate. Uh, we also want to do a round of data analytics checks. So this is, um, you know, combining different variables together. You know, oftentimes if a company has, you know, 2000 office locations, it's really hard to review data for every 2000 sites. So we do some high level data analytics just to make sure that the data across the, 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 the company boundary uh, appears reasonable. We're definitely going to look into the calculation review. Um, so this is essentially a really detailed QC check of, you know, are you using the right primary activity data, the throughput data? Are you using the right emission factors to match with that throughput data? Um, are the emission factors that you're using the most up to date and most relevant? You know, are you converting your unit? So it's really that's where we dig into the actual calculations of your inventory. And again, the, the verification process is in conformance with the relevant standards. You know, on CDP's website, they have a list of, of standards that all verifiers need to adhere to in order to do the verification process. So why engage in greenhouse grass assurance? Well, certainly there's disclosure benefits, whether it's through CDP or another third party disclosure. You know, there's definitely benefits in, in terms of improving your visibility and improving your transparency to get your emission statements and your data verified. Uh, the impending SEC requirements that are coming down the pipeline, there are a component of verification that is going to be required. So, you know, it's really best to get your company prepared now before um, it is being required, you know, 
in order to do verification. So certainly um, you want to get a good feel and good understanding of the process before it's being mandated. Uh, it's best practice, you know, whether or not you're putting, you know, data on your website or an internal corporate sustainability report or through CDP. Anytime a company is going to disclose some sort of public data, uh, it, it's certainly best practice to have a third party come in and, and just review that data before you, you make that go public. It's going to give you a better understanding of your risks and opportunities. So, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, there might be a mission source that there might be high variability, you know, a lot of assumptions baked into it. But if it's a mission source that you don't see growing in materiality throughout the years, and maybe it's 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 not so much of a risk to address that now. Um, it'll certainly present opportunities for improvement um, as you improve your data collection, as you improve your calculation process. So it's really going to give you an idea of things for you to watch out for in the future after you do your verification. And finally, what I like to, you know, I want to stress about assurance is, is, is a lot of companies are, are setting greenhouse gas goals, reduction goals, and, and that's all based off of a baseline. So it's in your best interest to make sure that baseline that you're measuring your reduction problems is as credible and accurate as possible. You know, companies spend a lot of time and money and effort into coming up with strategies, but then <clears throat> The last thing that company wants to happen is, you know, they develop these strategies, they develop these reductions, and you know, maybe a few years later they realize that their baseline is incorrect and all those reductions for which they were targeting um, might need to be adapted. So definitely before setting out on the journey to do a greenhouse gas reduction plan, you definitely want to get your baseline year um, verified. So this is just going to be uh, really high level. Five level, five steps of, the, of our verification process. You know, I'm going to go into detail on each of these five steps just to give you a better understanding of what's involved. And throughout these five steps, I'm going to sort of give you little pointers or, or little tips on how, you know, you could really maximize that step and, and how you can really interact and, and communicate with the verifier to really get the most out of that process. Step one is the pre engagement activity. So, you know, this is where we essentially discuss the scope of the work. And, you know, we're going to discuss the level of assurance. Um, you know, there's two main distinctions of, of assurance. There's limited level uh, for which is, is what is being asked for by CDP. And then there's reasonable level, which potentially could be asked for by the SEC requirements. So essentially, you know, reasonable level is, is, is a much thorough uh, review compared to, to limited level. So, um, you know, we're going to want to discuss uh, what level of assurance we're going to engage in uh, at the beginning of the process. You know, the scope of the project, are we going to only look at your scope one and scope two? Are we going to look at your scope three? Um, you know, are we going to look at your energy data, your, your waste data, your water data? You know, this is where we really discuss, you know, the scope of the project and what exactly, you know, we're going to be reviewing. Um, you know, value points for the, the client is really understand the level of communications. Um, you know, every buyer fire is a little different. You know, some like to communicate a lot. Some only like to communicate at the beginning and at the end and maybe do a few emails in between. But you definitely want to work with a um, verifier that aligns with how you like to communicate. And we want to establish that um, from the beginning. Um, again, clearly establish expectations, you know, really openly discuss what you're hoping to get out of this process. And, and the verifier can walk you through how, how they can, you know, um, provide that to you. So, you know, don't hesitate to be open at the beginning about what you're hoping to get out of it, um, because it's really a process for you to improve on your process to get your data and to do the calculations. Step two is the planning. So every company is different. So this is a very critical step in the verification because, you know, every company collects their data differently. Um, they have different types of data. They, you know, they, maybe they use Excel, maybe they use third party software. So we really need to understand how the process is done in order to come up with the plan. So usually what we want to do is we want to create a location or a repository for you to put all the data so that we can read that before we have like an initial kickoff call, because we'll get a good understanding initially on on the data you relied upon and how you did your calculations and so once we've done that then we conduct a few interviews to really understand your businesses in more detail you know to learn some aspects that we weren't able to understand through the calculation from the data um, and then based off of that we develop essentially a plan of attack on how to go about the verification process um, and we want to share that with you just to make sure that we're on the same page some things to consider on your end 
you know, you certainly want to get people involved, you know, the, the key subject matter experts, the one that were involved in, in collecting the data and doing the calculations as part of the verification process, because um, it, like I said, it's going to be a collaborative effort. Um, we want to make sure that um, the people within your company is, is understanding our process so they could potentially put some of those processes internally in place for the future. Um, understand what's really being asked by the verifier and document it. And, and again, like I said, you know, that's really a great opportunity for you to take some of those practices and some of those auditing practices to, to, to integrate that internally into your processes for future years of inventories. And again, outline uncertainty by you, you know, you know, you are probably the best to talk about some of the uncertainty that has sort of plagued you as you've collected data, as you've done calculations. So certainly bring that up to the verifier in the beginning of the project. Um, you know, even though if it might be a very minor source, but you've just always had this, um, something's always just been bugging you in the back of your mind about how the data has been collected and how you did the calculations. Certainly bring that up at, at the forefront because then that way the verifier can maybe, you know, identify that and spend a little more of his time on on trying to verify that source of uncertainty that you've always had. So, so definitely don't hesitate to bring that up early in the process. Next is the actual execution of that plan that you developed and, and start reviewing the data. So, you know, that's really reviewing invoices, you know, digging into your third party software, digging into your Excel, digging into your PDFs that you've put online. So that's really reviewing and verifying all the data. Um, again, checking the greenhouse calculations for, you know, the correct, correct activity is used, correct emission factors you use, you know, making sure those are aligned as well. Um, and again, um, really some overarching data analytics and risk assessments on um, the data. Now, obviously, if you're a very small operation, you could potentially review all the data for, for a small footprint, for, but for a global footprint, um, it, it might be very... Uh, labor intensive to review all the data. So that's why we conduct data analytics, especially for larger facilities or larger operations, because that way we can sort of see uh, any anomalies um, in data, you know, on a site by site basis. Um, some value points, you know, as a client really understand some of the data analytics that the verifier is doing. And again, that's really a great opportunity to start bringing that into your own internal audit processes. Um, understand what risks and, and opportunities are involved in any non-material shortcomings. So that's sort of what I mentioned in very early on in the presentation. So, you know, even though it might be a very minor emission source, you know, maybe you consume a small amount of propane or butane that's not significant to your operations, but you've always just been a little uncertain on how that calculation is done. But you do have a note, you do have an understanding that, you know, potentially your reliance on some of those um, fuels might increase in the future, you definitely want to sort of stamp out those uncertainties now while they are non-material, you know, just in case that they move to something that is more significant in the future. Ask questions about topics, even though not discussed by the verifier. So, you know, the verifier might, you know, have like a, a, a handful of issues that they want to discuss, um, some of their findings, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if they don't bring it up that it was right. Maybe they just didn't, uh, didn't feel that it was necessary to review that data. Um, but but definitely, you know, if, if you see the issues log, if you see the, the laundry list of issues that a verifier has, you know, and if something that's not in there that, you you know, like I said, since you are the one with probably the best knowledge of how you've done your inventory and, and there's something that you want to discuss, definitely bring it up. And, and so, um, again, that's really, you know, relies on what I'm trying to just convey is just really have an open line of communication with the verifier in the process just to make sure that you're really getting the most out of it. Step four is the actual completion of validation activities. So, you know, really the issues log is very critical. You know, this is what I mentioned about um, the list of an itemized list of everything a verifier has reviewed, um, how they reviewed it according to what standard, what guidance did they rely upon to, to review that. So that issues log is really going to be important. Um, and that's really going to lend us to reaching that conclusion on the opinion. And, and we essentially draft the opinion and those findings and present it to the client. You know, for your end, really take advantage of that issues logs for future further improvement. You know, some clients might just get an issues log and just sort of file it away. They're happy they got a favorable opinion and they just move forward. And unfortunately, some of those issues that were in those issues logs pop up next year that they do the inventory. So it's certainly in your best interest to really 
Although a lot of those issues and the log may not need to be fixed, they might be you know non-material issues. But it, it, what is in your best interest to sort of understand what those issues are and and potentially integrate that into your processes for the future? Um, again, revisit sources of uncertainty that were discussed in the planning stage. So you know both the verifier and the client will take note of of some of the communications that have gone on in the very beginning, talking about a little bit of the uncertainty. So certainly revisit those if you didn't get answers. Uh, for for some of those things that have been playing in your mind, so so certainly you know bring that up um, at the end of the process. Step five is an independent review of the independent review. So so for for every verification process, there needs to be a, another party to come in to sort of understand, you know, was the review comprehensive enough? So. Um, you know, once the verification is complete, another auditor is going to have to review things such as, you know, did it seem complete enough? You know, did the auditing team, you know, um, review appropriate amount of data? Um, you know, was was their plan of attack consistent with the plan that they developed in the beginning of the process? So, so, so for for all the clients out there, just please understand that you know if the verification is done. There, there is also another third party to to review that as well. Um, and once that is complete, um, th that's when the final letter is, is issue issued to the client. So to, to wrap things up, uh, I just wanted to summarize on a few um, closing points on how you can really get the most out of your verification. So first, I, I highly encourage you to get your, your data admissions verified before they are required. Um, you know, with with my history or with my experience in compliance, um, you know I know a lot of companies are always preparing themselves for impending rules. Um, you know whether it's in sustainability or, or environmental compliance. So that same approach should be adhered to by by those that are focusing on sustainability. You know you know please I I, I implore you to get all your data and emissions verified before it certainly become mandated. Um, second, really embrace verification and, and see it as an opportunity to really improve on your data and your emissions. You know, um, you know, really take every finding as as a step closer to really getting better data and accuracy um, in, in what you're disclosing. So, you know, re really take it um, again as an opportunity to improve on your processes. And that sort of lends to my my third point. You know, don't forget that this the process uh, or the purpose of verification is to really improve on your methods. So so don't forget to ask a lot of questions. You know, and and you know please do it early in the process. You know, talk about the uncertainty that you've had as a group through the years and in, in creating your inventory. You know, really openly discuss with the verifier so you can really get their opinion on you know if the way you've been doing it historically is 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 good or if if he, they have suggestions for for improvement. So please. You know, early on in the process, bring up those sources of uncertainty, and and finally, it really helps you understand your risks and opportunities. You know, if a verifier finds that there are data or that there are some emission sources um, that can be approved upon, you know, please understand that that is a potential risk to your disclosure from moving forward if you don't work towards getting better data. Um, so, you know, we definitely, as a verifier, we want to make suggestions. A lot of those suggestions may not be able to be resolved during the re current reporting cycle, but the, these are suggestions that certainly um, is in your best interest to take into account for for future um, the missions disclosures. So that concludes my thoughts on verification today for today's webinar, and, and thank you very much for registering and listening. And and at this point, um, we could certainly take some some questions. So thank you. So at this point, I don't I don't see any questions in the Q&A. Session, so I, I could take questions verbally. I, I think the, the mics. You do have a question, please type them in or, you know, certainly just raise your hand or, or just dash your question. Yes, Sally.
first let me get there is a couple of text questions. So the first one is, do we see clients trying to do scope one and three or doing scope one and two and then scope three? I will certainly say the trend is uh, certainly companies are more, uh, I think there's a more proportion of companies that are doing verification of their scope one and two versus their scope three. I, I think a lot of companies uh, understand that the collection of scope three data is, is, is a constant evolving process and they have more confidence in um, conducting uh, a scope one and two inventory. But I think that could be a good opportunity, um, you know, when you do the scope one and two inventory to, you know, sort of potentially get the verifier sauce on how you've collected uh, your scope three data. But but to answer your question, uh, for the most part, most companies are focusing on scope one and two, but I believe there's a high proportion of companies um, doing their scope three. I recall the, date, the data is pretty outdated, but I believe it was around 2018, the last I checked. Um, I think about 70% of CDP responders had their scope one and two verified, and I believe 60% got their scope three verified. And I'm sure that number has gone up since 2018. So um, while scope one and two is 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 focused, um, scope three is, is certainly increasing in, in people getting verified. Um, the second question is what is the extra workload for higher assurance than limited assurance? So uh, the California cap and trade rule, the mandatory reporting rule, they require, they don't say it in the rule, but it suggests that their requirements are a reasonable level of assurance. So one of these distinctions is reasonable level of assurance is it's really potentially going on site to review the data. Now, you know, obviously if a company, you know, has 200 facilities, it's, we obviously cannot go to all 200 facilities, but maybe, you know, talking about a manufacturing sites. They have a couple of manufacturing facilities and a few satellite offices. It certainly would be um, highly encouraged to visit some of those manufacturing sites where I'm thinking most of the emissions would be. So um, it, it's not a required component, but it, it's certainly um, something that we might want to consider for higher assurance. And higher assurance really is um, reviewing more data, doing a lot more data analytics. Um, it, it's really just a, a lot more labor intensive than than limited assurance. So um, th that that's the the main distinction for between the two levels of assurance. Um, next. What is the recommended timeline for these verifications? It really depends. You know, I, I you know, you know, peak season for verification is typically is between March and June. I think a lot of people are preparing, you know, for their internal corporate sustainability report, CDP. So, you know, just keep in mind during, you know, between now and June is very busy. So verifiers are often juggling multiple projects. You know, if we just had time to focus on one project, you know, we could probably do verification anywhere between two and four weeks if that's the only project that we have to focus on. But during peak season, you know, I would say four to six weeks. But again, we, you know, it, it really depends. You know, we have some clients that, you know, are just have specific deadlines and, and we do what we can to meet those deadlines. But, you know, just note that during peak season, it, it, it might expand. So, but usually between January and March and after July, you know, we, you know, these verifications usually take, you know, three to four or two to four weeks. how do you suggest the next question is how do you suggest that companies use a proper scare for their emissions nearest thousand tons or a hundred so i'm assuming that means when you report your disclosures um do you want to convert the emissions on a basis of a thousand tons or a hundred thousand tons um I think whatever is, you know, whatever is the most convenient for your operations. Um, you know, oftentimes that, that's done mainly because of a system issue. Um, you know, they, they don't want to show a bunch of digits. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think that's important to bring up to a verifier because oftentimes companies are not dividing it by a thousand or a hundred thousand tons. So definitely if you do that as 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 a practice that you've been doing for, for multiple years, you know, bring it up to the verifier because that, that's usually um 
that's definitely unique. So, you know, you definitely want to make note of the verifier. The verifier will probably make note of it, but I think that's one of those situations where it, it's something that is a unique thing you do. So certainly bring it on early in the process. Um, the last question. So do you recommend doing an external? I do. I, I do. And, you know, in helping companies set greenhouse gas reduction goals and climate transition plans, you know, it's really the last it's a very scary feeling, you know, as you're almost done with the process, realizing that there was a mistake in the base year. Um, you know, oftentimes in those types of projects, we evaluate the base year first. Um, but I, I think it's, it's very important to get your base year verified. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of effort and money and time is, is put into these plans and it is all relative to a base year. And, and so the last thing you want to do is is report to the company or report to the stakeholders or the people that are involved in the process that, you know, we, you know, we made some progress on these reduction strategies, but then we had realized we have to go back to the base year because there were some errors. So, you know, for, for us personally, we evaluate thing that the first part in any of those projects, but um, I, I certainly recommend getting verification when you're, you know, trying to establish your base year for reduction planning. So last question. So what if we do not have the details of our utility bill, such as electricity? Um, how would we calculate and assure? Well, there's a few things. So first, we would want to discuss why electricity data is not available. Now, you know, that's often the case, you know, especially in lease properties where, you know, your utilities are baked into your rent. But, you know, could you have gone to the property management company to get utility data? You know, th th those could be um, findings and suggestions for improvement. But if we were to provide, for example, expense, you know, as an assurance or as a verifier, we would review the expenses still, you know, the invoices for the expenses, and then just review the local utility um, rates just to make sure that the, the calculations based off of expense um, is reasonable based off of the the annual electricity and billing rate for that certain utility. So um, we certainly want to do our best to get actual throughput and activity data. But you know, if 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 in the end that you only have expense data, um, we would still be able to verify and make sure that those align with the the local billing rates for your local uh, utility provider. Um, so good. So. Um, well, those were some good questions. Well, again, um, thank you very much. And and please, um, my email is on this presentation. I believe CDP is going to put the um, webinar online. So please, you know, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any further questions about verification or you know anything about that process. So again, uh, thank you very much, and have a good day, everyone.